So Phineas and Ferb is coming back again with the upcoming Disney Plus film, Candace Against the Universe. It's going to be full of everything we love about that series. Anators, platypuses, singing. As the iconic shape-shaped characters embark on an intergalactic journey to rescue their sister who doesn't want to be saved. It looks awesome and frankly is awesome. It's awesome that we'll be able to return to this world for an hour and some change. But because I'm a greedy little piglet, I already want more revivals of cartoons that I love. And since Disney's already getting the ball rolling, let's not forget that the Proud Family is getting a new series on streaming. What franchise is as ripe for the revival picking than Gravity Falls? Now, let's be completely honest. There doesn't need to be more Gravity Falls in this world. We just want it. The series is still huge with new fans joining in on the fun even now. We've had a best-selling recreation of Journal 3 come to fruition, a successful graphic novel with four canon short stories, and Phibia is straight up giving us a Hirsch-voiced alternate universe frogified Gorgle Stan and Seuss, the latter of which is literally named Frog Seuss. Gravity Falls makes the mouse money and has near perpetual hype around it. I think getting more is a little bit justified. I feel like the issue here, aside from Hirsch now being a busy man over at Netflix, is that if Gravity Falls returns, you've got to make sure it's a damn good story. Journal 3 tells us the intimate story of a man who has put down his entire life and becomes so determined to prove himself that he develops a complex, isolating himself from everyone around him, and only being saved from both literal hell and a lonely, unfulfilling life by his family's unconditional love. Lost Legends gives us delightful character-driven antics that continues to flesh out the cast. You have to make it mean something. So what if Disney decided, fine, let's order a brand new Gravity Falls special for Disney Plus. Hirsch is on board, as much of the cast and crew as possible returns, giving us the promise of a satisfying reunion between the audience and the world of Gravity Falls. All that remains in this hypothetical is a story. Well, Hirsch obviously won't hop on a YouTube channel and spill his ideas for a revival, but I think I have a decent story in my brain. Although I am not a professional writer in animation, I love cartoons and can't stop watching the stuff let alone thinking about the stuff, which leads to a lot of brainstorming. So sit back, grab some popcorn, and let my words, alongside y'all's wonderful imagination, take you back to Gravity Falls for a brand new adventure. Before we dive in though, thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. You remember the episode of Gravity Falls Sock Opera, where Dipper spent a good chunk of the episode trying to hack into McGucket's laptop? For us, it was cool. It was driving the story forward. But for McGucket, it was a violation of privacy. Imagine if we were McGucket, and instead of Dipper, it was some no-name hacker. And they were trying to get into your information from halfway across the globe. That's just one of the many reasons why you would need ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is an incredible service that enables unrestricted access to all parts of the internet while keeping you safe and secure. With forces like hackers, spyware, and slow internet speeds breathing down your neck, ExpressVPN is able to encrypt and hide your IP address, making it look like you're in a different part of the world. Preventing hackers from creeping in and stealing your information when you're connected to unencrypted networks like at airports, hotels, and coffee shops. It's super easy. All it takes is a literal press of a button. And can can be accessed on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Something that I love about ExpressVPN actually comes in handy now more than ever. It gives you way more shows and movies on streaming. Case in point, if I change my VPN location to the UK, Suddenly, I have Rick and Morty and Final Space. That's not in America! Even with YouTube, sometimes videos are region locked, and ExpressVPN allows me to bypass that with no hassle. ExpressVPN is the fastest VPN on the market, with glowing reviews, 24-7 customer service, and easy access. You truly can access it anywhere, and you can get 3 months free with a 12-month plan only by clicking the link in the description. ExpressVPN.com slash the roundtable. Again, this is free three months in addition to the 12 month plan at expressvpn.com slash the roundtable. Take back your internet privacy today. Now, I really want to start at the characters and setting, because although it's Gravity Falls, a cast of characters we already know, this is a story that takes place after the summer. 
meaning things are different. Time has passed, not too much time, but Gravity Falls is in a different season. And yeah, I also want an excuse to give the characters some modified new designs. Now, the story of this movie takes place during Dipper and Mabel's following spring break, 2013, before the next summer. And starting with the Pines twins, of course by the end of the series they are both 13 years old. But what does that actually look like for them? Well, Dipper's hair is a little bit longer, closer to how he looked in the pilot, done to both show his age and just as a little homage to said pilot. Although I know Hirsch isn't fond of it, Dipper has a smidge bit more neck. Instead of the tee and vest, he wears a long sleeve baseball tee with the colors of his previous outfit, and instead of gray shorts, he just wears gray pants. Since summer, Dipper has been continuing his interest in the supernatural, thanks to remote aid from Ford. He still is hungry for knowledge. School can only go so far, and of course none of his teachers believe him when he says, I spent the entire summer in actual Narnia. He's socializing, he has friends, but when Mabel isn't forcing him to hang out with them, socialization is unfortunately good for you, Dipper. He's at home studying every photograph of an anomaly that Ford has sent him filling out his own journal, which are another reveals that he obtained at the end of the summer, and although he's not in as much of a rush to grow up, he's still forming decent ideas of what he wants to do when he grows up. What career path does he want to pursue? On the other hand, there's Mabel, who's also given a smidge more neck, but overall there's nothing too crazy of a difference in her design, simply just swapping out hair accessories, so instead of the headband, she's wearing a bow for the duration of the special, similar to how she appeared in Double Dipper. Still wearing sweaters, she She'd have a few over the course of this movie as it takes place over multiple days. Mabel has been excelling at extracurricular activities at school, basically leading the charge of multiple clubs, but as a result, finds herself struggling to enjoy her free time, fixated on the next big art project, perfecting her Mabel Claw recipe for culinary. It's all taking a toll on her, but looking at a different set of twins, we have Stanley and Stanford. Grunkle Stan has stayed in retirement mode since the end of the summer, and this is reflected in his more casual wardrobe, flexing his impeccable taste and lazy fashion. I feel like the artists and designers would have a ball of how they can make Stan look. There's no concrete image of him in my mind, but we've seen Stan in casual clothing before, so I don't believe this change would be anything too crazy. Whatever makes Stan happy, he's been enjoying his time reconnecting with his brother and traveling the world, taking on anomalies, amassing his own collection of monster spleens. Ford's also a lot happier these days, enjoying his adventures with Stan and staying connected with his family. This shift in optimism and restored relationship with his brother is reflected in his repaired glasses. However, he doesn't care too much to switch up his wardrobe, remaining in his coat and sweater. Still whipping up gadgets and gizmos, Ford is arguably in his prime. Then we have Seuss. As the new Mr. Mystery, Seuss is still rocking Stan's former outfit as much as possible. The dude loves it, and he loves his job. However, he's also grown susceptible to stress, finding himself under a lot of pressure. Maintaining an adult life and relationship with Melody, his abuelita's grown more dependent on him, and he's worried about not living up to Stan's legacy. Change has blessed his life, yet hasn't been the kindest all the same. Last but not least for the main cast, we have Wendy. The biggest change of which is that she cut her hair. And instead of the mint green, she's rocking a red flannel. Why? Well, since the end of Dipper and Mabel's first summer in Gravity Falls, she's grown closer with her family and decided her wardrobe was due for a change anyways, but nothing too crazy. She's enjoying what time she has left in high school, she's dating around, and doing the best she can to get her thrills, but it's really hard without Dipper and Mabel there by her side. Now, although this sums up all of our main cast, don't worry. In my mind, all the familiar faces you can think of pop up in this story. Well, as long as they're a part of the town. But what about the actual story? Well, if you couldn't figure out from the character descriptions, this is a story about change, but a different kind of approach at it. Essentially the idea of, while change is good, you can't force change. And not every kind of change is good. It's all about making the right changes. Changing for the sake of change doesn't mean you'll be able to properly adapt to a situation. How so? Well, let me tell you what I got. At first, I really wanted an alien story, tying it back to Dipper and Mabel versus the future, and seeing Dipper and Mabel travel beyond Gravity Falls. 
But then I thought about it. Considering this would be the first piece of animated content post Rumageddon, and thus the original series, I assume the executives and the OG crew would want this special to feel like a reunion and thus stay within Gravity Falls, which eliminated a bulk of my story ideas. However, I knew no matter what, I wanted a different kind of threat and have the story take place over spring break. So, hoping the internet doesn't roast me into oblivion, here's that particular story in question. Dipper and Mabel are eager to escape their overworked lives at home as they pack their bags and head towards Gravity Falls at spring break. A week free of stress and responsibilities. No homework, no papers, no popularity contest. It feels like coming home. However, returning to the town brings a lot of mixed emotions. The twins are ecstatic to reunite with their friends and family, but they quickly find that not everything is how they left it. In the aftermath of Weirdmageddon, a young, eccentric, chilled out businessman who happens to be a childhood friend of Seuss, named Trent D, say that fast and you'll get the pun, has recently partnered with the economy of Gravity Falls in an attempt to modernize and attract new tourists. As a result, everything they love is going away. Greasy's Diner has a new menu that isn't all that greasy. The pool has been renovated, but at the price of strict new rules. Messing with the swimming hours, who can swim with who or when they can even swim. The mall has gotten rid of the stores our main characters adore, but it can't be denied that these changes are yielding positive results, at least on a surface level. Tourists and money are coming in faster than ever, but Dipper and Mabel can't shake that there's something off. The Mystery Shack isn't safe from these changes either. In fact, the best has been saved for last. Trinity convinces his childhood friend Seuss to breathe new life into the shack. Stan isn't running the show anymore, but all these knickknacks and fake monsters are old and dusty. They have his imprint on it. Trent D wonders, where's the edge? So pressured and manipulated into believing the Mystery Shack will fall if he doesn't spice things up, Seuss comes around and lets Trent D take the reins of modernizing the shack. When Dipper and Mabel arrive in Gravity Falls, the shack's revamp is already far in its progress. Though the Stan Bros make it clear they're not a fan of Trent D's attitude or approach. And if you're wondering why Stan and Ford are back home, it's because simply, everyone organized their priorities and set their calendars to make sure that they would all be together when Dipper and Mabel visit Gravity Falls. The biggest change to the shack is the replacement of Stan's various makeshift monsters with quote-unquote fake monsters who appear to be a lot more lifelike, complete with heavy breathing, growling, trying to scratch up tourists who get too close. But Trenty insists it's all animatronic. Initially, the twins suspect that Trent is abducting monsters from Gravity Falls and throwing them into the shack against their will. But the Pines family stumbles upon a much more disturbing reality. People all over town who are deemed unhip, aka they're old, lazy, maybe they're unemployed, maybe they just have horrible fashion sense. They're all being abducted and transformed into monsters in order to be thrown into the shack for profit by Trent D himself. And if action isn't taken by the end of the week, everyone deemed unhip is set to be monsterfied and turned into a tourist attraction. As the clock races, the Pines band together to save the town, its people, and the soul of Gravity Falls. But if they slip up, they too can be transformed into monsters. And that's the basic gist of it. You probably have a lot of questions. How do townsfolk being transformed into monsters correlate with the overall theme of change? Well, they're being forced to change themselves into something or someone else in order to be marketable and appealing. How are the townsfolk being transformed into monsters? Well, there's a lot of ways you can go about that. I assume Trenty would have some sort of machine. Initially, I thought maybe he would put up an attraction in the mystery shack that's monsterify yourself. See what you would look like as a monster, but it actually did transform you, but I feel like that would be too direct. Now that Gravity Falls hasn't been blunt before, but more so of, wait, how would no one notice they're being actually transformed into monsters? Maybe the transformation would manifest later on in the night. However, I feel like it would make even more sense if it wasn't a direct trap within the shack itself, but rather has something to do with the ominous changes around the town. Maybe something with the food in the diner. Maybe those deemed unhip are served food that will trigger a transformation once consumed and digested. When Dipper and Abel first arrive to Greasy's Diner, they believe Lazy is going to whip up a fresh plate of hotcakes, but instead gets some weird plastic looking square pancakes instead. They pass on it. It turns out later that would have transformed and doomed them. 
maybe after hours at the mall they're taken to a mysterious venue, maybe one of the beloved stores that shut down, and the weird spooky supernatural machine transforms them into monsters that way. You get what I'm saying, you can make it work, but I thought it'd be interesting if, instead of introducing another monster that's a play on a well-known cryptid or two, or going with something generic like aliens as originally intended, the townsfolk themselves would be the anomaly of the special. For once, they're the Gravity Falls weirdness. I can totally imagine Wendy's squad getting monsterfied, but Gleeful decides to work with Trent D. But hey, Gideon's a good guy now, we get to check in on Gideon, so Gideon decides to double cross his father, says screw the money, and as consequence, he gets caught and monsterfied. But that same thing could also happen with Pacifica and her parents. I like to imagine at some point Dipper and Mabel's room gets taken over, the room itself gets transformed into an attraction, maybe the same thing with Stan and Ford, so they would have to stay at Old Man McGucket's mansion, formerly the Northwest Mansion, Ford and McGucket can work together to figure out a cure for the monster townsfolk, I'm sure there can be some shipping between Dipper and Pacifica. I imagine the monsters the townsfolk are being turned into would be a mix mash of various monsters from series past, again keeping up with the modernized Mystery Shack theme. Imagine Toby Determined being turned into a cross of a Manitar and a Lily put in. For other moments I see in my head, I definitely think someone in main cast would get monster fight at some point. Maybe Seuss, if not him, his girlfriend Melody, or one of the twins, maybe one of the stands. I think Trent D would either monster fight himself or have the revelation that he's already monster fight, but he can kind of control it. Maybe having the DNA of multiple monsters within him, so we could have the super OP moment where each limb becomes a different creature, he's utilizing different abilities on the Pines family, but his defeat would be a family effort. Everyone gets in the blow, but Seuss has the final blow of injecting Trent D with the cure so he loses all of his monster powers. We definitely get a few action sequences. I can see a monster chase scene. Uh, sorry guys, but we have to fight kind of scene. And yeah, a final battle between Trent D kind of scene. And of course, we'd have some storytelling staples. An object is being introduced within the first act. They utilize it in the pivotal moment in the third act. Romance being afoot, just not with Mabel. Maybe even a song. This special or movie wouldn't be too long, close to 90 minutes at most. At the least, I think a solid 60 minute runtime would be golden. Now obviously, this particular pitch is never going to be made into a movie, even on the off chance the Disney executive saw this and loved it, which I came up with this story in like 20 minutes, I don't, I don't think they are. <laughs> There's a whole thing with taking ideas from fans and all that. Just not gonna happen. But I'm still pretty happy with myself with the story, even if I end up hating it in a month or two from now. But who knows, maybe I won't. However, I wanna know what you guys think. What did you think of this story idea? Would you wanna watch this movie? What other ideas for the plot do you have? What ideas for your own Gravity Falls Disney Plus special do you have? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts at RondableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Fox. We're also on Instagram. Special thanks to Art with Coda for all of the amazing art and the thumbnail for this video. You can find more Coda goodness on his Instagram and YouTube channel at Art with Coda. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ultra Fox, signing out.